Now I will talk about how to solve the constraint optimization problem for inequality constraint. So that is how to solve that for inequality constraint. That is, I have a function that I want to minimize. I want to minimize this for w and d. And I have a constraint in this form. I have g of w and d. This, this, is, this constraint should be, say, higher or equal than zero. So this is an example of the inequality constraint. Now I have just one constraint. Now, how to solve that? Well, what the Lagrangian do in this case is that it transforms this constrained optimization problem into again a constrained optimization problem but it is kind of relaxed so what's the meaning of that well first of all this is the new problem that we will try to minimize or optimize which is represented by this equation the Lagrangian it's the same equation as the, the previous equation so I can write it in this form f minus alpha j right so I will try to minimize this I will try to minimize this Lagrangian for w and d and alpha but I need to take into account another constraint which is alpha should be higher or equal than zero so if you see here I have a minimization problem in a constraint and again here a minimization problem and a constraint so why this is useful well this is useful because this constraint here this is a relaxed constraint and this kind of means that this is easier to solve than this constraint it's easier to take into account this constraint because this is an equation and this is just a constant so uh, just to tell you an idea about how to solve that so what we do normally is that we just try to find our uh, our parameters w and d and alpha that would minimize this so for example just an example say that I got two solutions for w and d and alpha say that I got w equal to 3 and d equal to minus 5 and alpha equal to say 7 so this is the first solution, solution 1, solution 1, and this is the second solution. Say that w is equal to um, minus, or say 1, d equal to 3, and alpha equal to minus 5. So in that case, I will take this solution. And it's obvious because alpha here is higher or equal than zero, whereas this alpha here, this is smaller than zero, and this does not satisfy my constraint. So in fact, what I did is just I minimized my function normally, but I just you know chose the solution that has that satisfies this simple constraint. So this is a simple constraint which is not the case with this constraint which is more complicated than this constraint now what if I have a constraint on G that is not higher or equal than zero but instead I have say that I have J smaller or equal than zero in that case I need just to modify this constraint here so instead of saying that alpha should be higher or equal than zero I would say I want to find the solution for which alpha is smaller or equal to zero so in that case this would not be the solution I will take this solution because it satisfies my constraint so just pay attention for this constraint here and it has a relation with the with this sign here okay now let's generalize that 
for uh, n constraints because so far we've been been dealing with just with one constraint what if I have n constraint n constraint well it's the same thing it's the same thing as this equation that I wrote here for equality constraint we have the same equation but the difference is that you need to take into account the constraints for alpha okay remember just the constraint about alpha and then everything is good okay now I will talk about the primal and the dual uh, problem so what is the primal and what is the dual the primal is just the uh, the primal problem is just the problem that we have been trying to minimize for the Lagrangian so this is a primal problem <coughs> this transform problem for Lagrangian is called a primal problem okay for e equality constraint and also for um, inequality constraint oh uh, before talking about the primal and the dual problem there is another case that I need to talk about okay to just forget about this primal and dual I will talk about it later because there is another case that I need to talk about which is what if I have what if I have say both type of problems what if I have equality constraint equality constraint and inequality constraint because so far we treated only both of these independently because I can have a problem like this for example I can have a problem that where I'm asked to minimize a function find the W and D that would minimize this function and I have uh, I have you know n constraint n inequality constraint I have GI of W and D should be higher or equal than zero such that I starts from 1 to etc till it gets to n okay and I have also an equality constraint I have HI or HG just to differentiate it from this one so I have an equality constraint I have M equality constraint that should be satisfied so now I have both problems both constraints so how to deal with that well there is just a slight modification on the Lagrangian equation we will try to minimize or we will try to optimize the following equation of the Lagrangian this is the equation I will try to optimize for Lagrangian for this case so I would have here W and D and alpha I and also another type of um, Lagrangian coefficient which is beta G so alpha I is associated with these constraints with inequality constraints whereas beta G is a Lagrangian coefficient that is associated with these constraints here for equality constraints so now the equation is written in this form so it's f of w and d minus the summation of alpha i g of w d g of i of course i starts from 1 to n n constraints plus the summation of beta g this is the Lagrangian coefficient for equality constraint multiplied by h of w and d and hg of course so j starts from 1 to m and of course to solve this optimization problem you need to have a, you need to take into account the following constraint for alpha so you need to take into account this following constraint for alpha i so alpha i should be higher or equal than zero okay but if this constraint you have here was smaller or equal than zero so in that case also alpha i should be smaller or equal than zero okay so that's it
for equality and inequality constraints. Now in the next video I will try to talk about the primal and dual problem.